So I'm gonna keep going forward with this presentation for y'all. So number one, what is a stage manager? Um, this is a picture of a coffee cup that I've always wanted to buy, but I've never had the opportunity to. Um, it says stage manager, noun, a magical device, usually fueled by caffeine that brings order to chaos. Um, the caffeine isn't necessary. I just drink a lot of coffee and a lot of stage managers do because you have to be up at crazy hours and you have to do some crazy things. Um, so that's one definition of stage management. Um, it's a little bit of a goofier one. But we can go forward to the American Association of Community Theaters definition of stage manager. Um, so they say on their website, stage managers typically provide practical and organizational support to the director, actors, designers, stage crew, and technicians throughout the production process. They're also the director's representative during performances, making sure that the production runs smoothly. Um, and below that, I have listed just a few of the basic responsibilities. My definition, which is a little bit less wordy than that, the stage manager is the glue of the production. Um, what a stage manager does is they are essentially the liaison between all the different departments of a show and their goal is to make the show run as smoothly as possible. Um, and there's sort of three basic areas that are the duties of the stage manager. Um, they take care of the administrative needs of the rehearsal process, they assist the director, and they um, have responsibility for onstage and backstage activity during the run of the show. Um, and generally, when teaching stage management, you have more than one class. be kind of a lot of material at one time. Um, if you want the slideshow, or if you want any of the paperwork that I'm going to show you, please feel free to email me. Um, and I'm going to have my email and contact information at the end of this presentation as well. But um, yeah, so that's a general rundown of what a stage manager is. And here is a little bit more in depth of what is involved in the process of being a stage manager throughout a show. Um, so there's four different phases of stage managing a show. There's prep week, rehearsals, tech, and the run of the show. And you can break all of those down into smaller pieces, but that's, this is the way that I like to organize my life when I'm going into a show. Um, prep week. I have a picture of SpongeBob here writing because prep week involves a lot of writing paperwork. Um, it's the preparation period of a show and you generally, it's called prep week because you'll usually take a week before rehearsals start to do this. Um, during this period of time, the stage manager is gonna familiarize himself with the show and do organizational paperwork to prepare for the rehearsal process and get the rehearsal space ready. Um, so what a stage manager is going to wanna do, like you're going to have the paperwork, yes, and then physically you're going to have to go into the rehearsal space and um, make sure that it's clean and tidy and in a good state for the rehearsals. Um, that's, it's kind of different depending on what sort of theater you're doing. Cause like in school theater, you're generally going to have the space for rehearsal whenever you need it. So you can do what they call taping out the floor and use colorful tape to signify where different pieces of furniture or set pieces might be. But in the case of like AACT, I think the swing dancers would be, they would start throwing things at us if we taped on their floor. So can't really do that in that situation. Um, but I mean, it's sort of loose. Yeah, it depends on what you're doing, like who you're working with. Um, and you're going to get to know all the people here you're working with. So you might reach out to people who like the designers and the directors to figure out how they like to work during this week. And it's up to the stage manager how they like to organize this week for themselves. And I'll show you my process, but for, for everything in this presentation, remember to, you can always take it with a grain of salt. It sort of depends on the show, the organization and stuff like that. So when I'm familiarizing myself with the show, I take the play and I read through it once without doing any work. I, I just read through it for enjoyment and to familiarize myself. And then the next read through, 
I start to take a deeper look into what happens in the show to begin my paperwork and the production analysis. Um, this is my to-do list that I use for pretty much every show when I'm doing my prep week. Um, as you can see, there's lots of paperwork. I'm gonna show you a few examples in a second here. And there's email and contact tasks. Um, usually I'd also put in there just introductory emails to people who I'm working with. And then lots of et cetera. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna go through everything in this because of limited time, but um, basically you can see that stuff with figuring out contact and like who's involved in the show and then also paperwork that's more involved with the actual script of the show itself. Um, this is an example of what I call a scene breakdown. Um, and in this, you're going to read through the script and make a notation of who all is in what scene. And this is something that's important because it's good for a director to have so that they know who they want called for a certain rehearsal based on what scene you're rehearsing and stuff like that. Um, so at the top, you can see that you have the act and scene and then the pages of the script where that act and scene take place and then a column with the actor and which character they're portraying. So you have all the information in one place. Um, Carrie the Musical does not have just five scenes. It has more, but this is for the um, well-being of this presentation so that you don't have to look at all of that. Um, another thing that you make in prep week is a props list. Um, and this is for uh, one of the competitive musical theater shows that I did. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do with that is when you're going through the script, you look for the props that you need. That's on the far left column. And then the prop number, I like to give them a number just because um, sometimes you have two props that are similar, like journal and then red journal. So to make things not so confusing, the journal could be prop number five and red journal could be prop number 10. And you can make things even more specific with that. Um, you have what scene it is in, what page it's on, like what page the prop appears on. Um, the have, that's, um, I used that to see if we had all the props at the ready. And perishable is for props that um, might need to be refrigerated or props that are reused every night. Um, fun story with the cheese in this one. Um, it, the cheese was not collected after a show one night. So it got dry cleaned in the pocket of the jacket that it was in at the end of the show. Um, so that, and then they just reused it the next night and it was bad. So that's why you have it marked down as perishable and make sure that everybody knows that it's perishable so that you don't have dry clean cheese in a show. Um, and then on the far right, you have notes um, to make things more specific. Um, so with the white fur tuft on the very bottom, that's number 23, um, that's um, potential materials that the director thought that the fur tuft could be made out of. Oh dear. And then this is just a basic contact sheet that we would use um, and have the person and what they did and then their other contact information I would put there, but I, I didn't want to put their information up in the middle of this um, Zoom lesson, so I took it out. But that's what it would look like. Um, and this is more of a calendar thing that I would make using um, Google Sheets. I use Google Drive technology just because it's the easiest thing for me. Um, this has rehearsal schedules as well as conflicts. So the stuff in red would be um, like when people can't be at rehearsals, like on January 8th, James had church. So James was not going to be there from 6.30 to 7.30 and so on and so forth. So forth. Um, the next phase is rehearsals. Um, that's a little bit more of a well-known part of the process. Um, this picture is one of my favorite musicals, Something Rotten. Y'all might know, I love it. Um, this is a picture of them in rehearsal. Um, you can see that 
most of them are wearing street clothes, but um, a few of the actors have rehearsal skirts. So like they're not actually fully decorated costumes. They are just so that the actors can get used to moving in skirts and dancing in skirts and such. Then some rehearsal props, like that bucket that has like some duct tape on it. That's not, that's not going to go on stage of a Broadway show, but it's just so that the actor can get used to carrying something with buckets around the stage. And that's really important for safety and also for consistency for the actors. So they're not just given these crazy different props or costumes in tech rehearsals and they don't have any time to get used to them. That was a tangent. Anyhow, rehearsals. The director and stage manager run rehearsals together. So they're definitely a very big team in rehearsals. Um, the director has control of the room artistically while the stage manager sort of has administrative control of the room. Um, in my experience, the stage manager will get the rehearsal room set up and they'll set up the sign-in sheet to make sure that everybody is there on time. Because in a cast with like a lot of people, like your 30 person cast, you, it's good to have the sign-in sheet so you don't have to count everyone 50 times while everyone's milling around talking to each other. <laughs> um, it just doesn't work and you end up taking 20 minutes just to make sure everyone's there. So that's why I like having a sign in sheet. Um, and the stage manager will also generally ask the director when they're ready to get started and then be the person to say, hey everyone, um, welcome to rehearsal. It's six o'clock, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, Ms. Mock, take it away. Or whoever the director is, take it away. <laughs> um, and during the rehearsal, the stage manager does lots of things, which is why it's generally good to have a stage management team but um, the stage manager themselves is in charge of keeping track of when breaks happen. And when breaks happen, it's gonna depend on what's, like, again, where you're working at. If you're working on like a Broadway show, you have to use Actors Equity Association rules on how frequently breaks have to be. But if it's um, like a community theater, uh, breaks can be honestly whenever the director wants them to be. Um, the stage manager will also take blocking notes, which is very important. It's taking notes of everything that happens on stage, every movement any actor makes, stuff like that. And the stage manager will also write a rehearsal report, which is extremely important. And I think if um, anyone that's going to have a takeaway from this about like um, integrating stage managers into their programs, rehearsal report is it. Like, um, it's great just to have somebody to take notes of anything that's needed. Like if the director is blocking a scene, they realize, oh, we need a clipboard for this character in this scene. It, they can just turn to their stage manager and say, hey, stage manager, can you put a note in the rehearsal report that we need this prop? Stage manager will say, sure and they'll add that to the rehearsal report so that that note gets to the props master and also put that into the props list so that you don't get to tech rehearsals and you're like, oh my goodness, we never got the clipboard. What are we gonna do? Um, it just really makes things easier on the director and on everybody in the process. Um, I live by my rehearsal reports. <laughs> um, outside of rehearsals, um, you're going to be attending and moderating production meetings. Um, and that's going to be meetings outside of rehearsals where like the designer and the director, well designers are, are all going to come together and um, discuss anything that's needed for the production. This doesn't happen for every production, but it does happen pretty often. Um, so here is an example of a rehearsal schedule. Um, this is something that a stage manager will typically get from the director. Like the director will say what they want to happen and the stage manager will write it out and distribute it to the cast. Um, this can either happen nightly or weekly. Like for Carrie the Musical, we had it um, weekly where we create a schedule and sent it to the cast and the choreographer and everything. Um, you'll see in the far left column, you have times that things will happen. The next column, you have which characters are called or which ensemble members are called. It depends on the production, if you want to use character names or actor names. And then the next column, you have what's going to happen. It's 
pretty simple, but um, it, it took me a long time to get to this format that I like, which is, um, you know, time experience makes good products. Um, so for blocking, this is a fun one. <laughs> um, so for a blocking notation, it, you don't want to have to write out a full sentence that says, Carrie walks down stage left and picks up a pencil. That's too many words, and by then, the director is going to be already on the next page of blocking. So what I do during a show is I create a blocking notation. And I'll think of symbols for people's names. Um, usually, I'll do like the first letter of a name. Um, just because that's easy, but then you get to like ensemble people's names and you get to like, you have Carrie and Chris. So I'll, it's, it really depends on the names of the characters in the production. Um, and, um, sorry, Andrea, yes, Vaughn Wright. That, um, that's something that we have in the theater at U University of Montevallo. Uh, Vom is, it's an area that's not on stage. It's like from the audience. It's a door that you walk through from the audience to get onto stage. Um, and there's also symbols for downstage, which is towards the lip of the stage, upstage. Um, and honestly, it's like a whole little shorthand system and lots of people do it differently. But the important thing as a stage manager is to make sure that this notation is in your blocking book so that if you get hit by a bus or something, other people can understand it. And don't get too crazy with your notation because other people have to be able to understand it. Um, here's an example of some of my blocking for Carrie. Um, this is how I'll have it laid out. I'll have my script on the left and my blocking pages on the right. Um, so let's go to the top of the image on the right. You have MS, and that symbol, <laughs> file from chair six. Um, MS is Mr. Stevens. The symbol is pick up. File, it's a, that was a prop. And then from that little symbol that I have is a chair. It's a little crude drawing of chair. And then six, because we had six chairs on stage. That's the one that the file was on. And so you see how it's in line two? Um, you look over to the script. And about four lines down, Mr. Stevens has a line. I'd expect a stunt like this from Chris, but Sue. And I have the number two that I wrote down circled. And that helps me to know that right there where number two is, I can refer to the blocking page where line number two is. And that is where that action happens. And this is what stage managers like to call narrative blocking because you're writing out everything that happens. And something that I use to um, complement my narrative blocking. Um, so you'll look down at line number 17 on the image on the right. It says 2.2. .2. Um, I will make something called blocking charts. And that is going to be like a chart of where everyone's located on the stage at a certain time. I'll do that for different formations that the actors are in. And I do that with a program called StageWrite. It's an app that I have on my iPad. It's fantastic. I live by it. Um, but as you can see on the image on the bottom left, you have little symbols that you can have for the actors. You can either use their full names or the locking notation names for them. And if you import a PDF of the set design into it, you can make these charts of where everyone is on stage so that you can have that and also the individual movements of everyone that you have written out with your notation. Um, this is something that would take up an hour to explain by itself. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it at that. But if you have any more questions about that, feel free to like email me or something because blocking is a big passion of mine within stage management. Um, and that this is an example of a rehearsal report format. Um, at the top, you have the date and the number of the rehearsal. And then you have when you start rehearsing, when you took a break. So like rehearsal for this um, started at 6.30 p.m. 
Then we took a break at 7.46. Then we came back from the break at 7.51. And then we rehearsed from 7.51 till 8.46 and so on. Um, I'll generally have who's in attendance, and then any absences, tardies, or injuries, and then a rehearsal recap of what we actually did in the rehearsal. And then you go down from that to more specific notes. Um, like you'll have general notes that everyone needs to see. And then after that, you get into more specific categories like costumes. Like in this rehearsal, we had to let costuming know that all of the high school kids would be in the song Prom Arrival. Um, and then at the bottom, you have the electronic CC, like who all it's sent to electronically, and then who has the original copy. That would be the stage management team. Um, here we have an accident report. Sometimes in shows you have accidents. Um, as a stage manager, I've had people on stage being hit by frying pans in the face. I've been backstage and had to stop a show because someone in the audience had a seizure. Um, this particular one, <laughs> the director had a ladder fall onto his head. Um, so handling accidents is a whole nother lesson in itself, but it's something just to know is that it's good to document everything that happens within an accident, just so that you have it all written down. You have it written down who saw it and what steps were taken just so that it's documented. Um, that's important for any production, be it like academic through professional. And then we get to tech. This is my favorite part of a production. I love tech. And I have a little coffee cup up there because this is where I drink the most coffee. It's insane, y'all. <laughs> um, this little picture on the side, uh, it's from a TV show I like called Smash. Um, this character gets proposed to while she's in tech. And he says, will you marry me? And this is literally her response. She says, I'm in tech. Because it's just that encompassing of your life in that moment. Um, so tech is where all the technical elements of a show come together. You have your lighting, set, sounds, and costumes. And they all just come together. And this is where you test everything out. Um, that's generally going to happen during Q to Q, and people write it in different ways. But Q to Q is when the stage manager, directors, and designers go through the show, and they write in place cues. Like, um, a lighting cue would be like when the lights come up or when the lights change. Um, a sound cue would be when a sound effect happens or just when the stage manager needs to tell the sound operator to do something. Um, so. During Q to Q, these people write and place the cues while they're familiarizing the actors in the run crew with them. They're figuring out difficult sequences. Um, so something that a stage manager will curate during the tech process is a shift plot. And this is for the people who are backstage. That's generally going to be like your assistant stage manager or your run crew or both. Um, and the, the columns are generally going to be who does what or takes what, where they take it, when does it happen, and what are any notes that you need to know about it. Um, let me see if I have another one of these. Yes, here. Um, so to sort of explain what happens here, um, the second row this happens at the end of the opener song. This is from this year's College Night Show at Montevallo. Um, so who does this? It was the crew members, Maggie, Rachel, and Kayla. Um, they would take the set piece called the hovel. And what they did was they moved it to the downstage spike. This is another instance where we used notation. DS is downstage. And when it happened, it was after the applause. Um, wait three seconds into the applause and they would take it downstage. And the notes, they had to make sure the ensemble was clear so they didn't run over anyone with this set piece. <laughs> um, so this is something that what, whoever the stage manager is who is in charge of backstage, that's usually gonna be the first assistant stage manager. They'll curate this. Um, and here is another thing that a stage manager will curate. It's called a calling script. Um, and so you'll see that there are some lines that extend to the right of this page. Um, at the top, um, right next to, that's where I would find her. 
it says LX 303 and then under that it says spot one out. So that is how the stage manager knows that when this actor says the line, that's where I would find her at the very end of it, that is where the stage manager says go for these cues. So how I would call this would be around it led from the school, I would say the cues, I would say lights 303 and spot one out. And then after the actor for says, um, that's where I would find her, I would say go. And that is how the light operator would know to make light cue 303 happen by pressing the go button. And that's how the spot operator would know to take their spot out. Um, and LX, um, that's a, that's a shorthand for lights. So I don't have to write the whole word lights because lots of cues in this show. You can see 306 at this point. So I don't want to write out the word lights every time. Um, and then for sound cues, you could write SQ. There's lots of different kinds of cues that you might need in the show. Um, this is the most complicated calling sequence I've ever done. This all happened in the span of like 30 seconds. <laughs> Um, and you can see there's sort of a line down the middle. That's because I had to cut the empty space out of the middle and tape it so that the cues and, um, where they happened were closer together. So I won't have to like move my eyes as much. This is a sheet of my clog script from Carrie the Musical, where Carrie destroys the, um, the prom and the, the, it was a gym, I think, the gym that the prom happens in. So um, I, it got to the point with this that I couldn't even write down which lighting cue it was because I didn't have enough time to say it. So I just had written down a script of exactly what I would say because I didn't even need to know what number it was. I just need to know what I would say. So I had to say lights and sound go, lights and door one go, lights and gate go, lights go, lights go. Stand by left and spots. Um, and so that just goes to show cues for a show can be really complicated or a little bit simpler like this. Um, and I'm actually going to show y'all a video of me calling the sequence in a minute here. Um, but first I have to show you the run of the show. Um, fun fact, actors and stage managers are in the same union, Actors Equity Association. Does anybody have any idea why that might be? You can go ahead and type it into the chat if you have any idea. I'd like to see what people think. Because stage managers clearly are not actors. Um, as you're typing, this is a picture of the actual show that I showed you rehearsal photos of. Something rotten. Every theater aficionado should watch it. It's really great. So Ms. Mock said, because they're all in rehearsals and production together, same hours, et cetera. Dawn said, because they deal directly with hours. Um, Ace said, they're people who tour the show. Um, Fred said, they might have the same script. Y'all are all sort of on the right mindset. Um, the reason for it is because stage managers and actors are the only people who stay with the show for the entire run of the show. Um, because when the show opens, the director in professional theater is not going to stay with the show and watch it every single night. After opening night, they pretty much leave. They go and they do their next project. And the stage manager stays with the show. And the the cool thing about that is that it gives the stage manager some more artistry to put into their job. The stage manager, once the director leaves, is in charge of maintaining the original artistic vision of the show. So um, like once the director leaves and once you settle into a long run of a show, people might start doing something different than they were originally told to do. Like they might realize that they get a laugh on a certain line, so they might start milking the line more or doing something goofy at that point and 
um, the stage manager, having been at the rehearsals and everything, will know that that's not what was originally intended to happen. So um, it's their responsibility to give those notes to the actor and tell them, hey, pull it back a little bit, go back to what you're originally told to do. It's here in the blocking book that I still have from the rehearsals because I took these notes, yeah. <laughs> um, so I think that's really cool. It's something that people don't think about a lot with stage management. There's a lot of artistry that goes into it. Um, so running of the show, the stage manager calls the show every night or runs the deck. Um, they lead understudy and put in rehearsals. So if um, an understudy has to go on by surprise or there's a new person who's been cast in the show, the stage manager leads that because they have all the blocking notes they took back in the original rehearsals. Um, the stage manager generally um, is the head of maintaining the emotional well-being of the cast, like not in the sense of they come bring you chocolates every time you're sad or something. <laughs> um, they, they just have to have a really good sort of sense of how the ensemble of people is doing and um, knowing when something might be wrong and like stage managers and professional shows will often organize cast things to do together or make a cast softball league or something. Um, yeah, and maintaining artistic vision of the show. Told you all about that already. Um, this is just, uh, if y'all want to take a picture of this real quick, I won't explain it too much, but this is something that stage managers who run the deck would use to make sure that all the props are where they need to be before the show. That's really important, because like if you um, are supposed to exit stage left, grab this prop from this table, and then go immediately back on stage, the prop's not there, that just throws a big old wrench in the show. So it's um, important for stage managers to have checklists before shows and make sure that they are adhered to very specifically. Um, and this is a clip from Carrie the Musical. I took this clip um, from the booth and I, um, <clears throat> sorry, my throat. Um, I took this while I was calling the show. This is from the hardest sequence in that show. Um, as a content warning, this is from Carrie the Musical. So this is sort of a violent scene. Nothing, like nobody's actually being hurt. It's theater, um, but there's somebody who writhes on the ground at one point. There's somebody who gets pushed up a wall telekinetically. There's a part where someone gets electrocuted on a gate. Um, and there's lots of screaming. So if that's something that you really want to be chill with, you can feel free to step out for like, like I'd say come back at like 7.57 and it'll be chill. Um, again, seriously, no judgment. This is just the best clip that I have of me calling anything. Um, and just take a listen. Like you're going to have to listen a little bit past some of the screaming happening on stage to hear me calling these cues but you're going to hear me saying the word go a lot. And notice when I say go, how something will change on stage, like a light or something. So I'm gonna give anyone who wants to step away just an opportunity to do that. Um, come back at like 7.57. And all right, I'll get this video started. Lights and 
too. Go. Set one spot out. Go. Lights. Yeah, that was that. Um, I'll give a minute for anyone who wants to come back to come back. Um, thank you, Andrea, that's very nice. Um, and these are just some words from other stage managers about their favorite parts of their jobs. Um, Jen Nelson Lane, she is my stage management mentor she is who taught me everything I know about this craft. Um, she said she loves being involved in every aspect of a production from start to finish. And that's, that's sort of how I feel about stage management. It's just, I get to sort of touch everything that ends up showing up on stage and it's really cool. Um, love being there to support and encourage the cast and crew. Um, and I'm not gonna talk through all of these, but I, I figure you've had time to read through a couple. So yeah, it's just basically the gist of it is it's a really wonderful, fulfilling job and it's really fun and you get to do so much to help this, to help productions get onto the stage and have a really big sense of pride in that. Um, so I'm gonna open it up to questions now and there's my contact information at the bottom of the screen. Um, if you have a question, go ahead and just say your name in the chat and then um, Cindy will call on people. And if y'all have to go, go ahead. Um, I know it's pretty late now, but thank you so much for having me and for listening to my little spiel about stage management. Yeah. Um, just um, you had a question for yeah, Andrea. Uh, where is she? Um, I think she was asking me to go back to a certain slide, so I can go ahead and do that real quick. Um, this is the props preset. Um, something that I like is that there's a place on the far right of this to check off everything and you see how there's like lots of little square shaped grids it's because every column is for one night of the show so you can use a sheet of paper over and like for as many columns of that as you have to check it off every night and I like physically checking it off to make sure that I did indeed remember to put the two mugs on the downstage right shelf. Um, and then this is the shift plot. Um, I, I mean, you can use the shift plot for props as well. Um, but I mean, the thing for this show is that we didn't really have too many props. We just had like a lot of big set pieces and I had to put where they went on there. So yeah. Um, so I think we have a question from Savannah. All right. Um, so my question was, uh, what advice do you have to anyone who is, uh, looking to be more involved in stage management as particularly with your experience at UM, um, what would you think would be a good start? I'd say that on levels that are like more academic and also like community theater, a really good thing to do is to get started as an assistant stage manager because um, you'll be given these stage management jobs, but you'll also have the head stage manager to sort of walk you through them, and explain things that might be um, 
difficult concepts or difficult projects as opposed to being like thrown straight into the fire as the stage manager. So yeah, um, either that or um, joining a run crew somewhere is a really good way to get familiarized with stage management. Like I was run crew for Annie at the Alabama Shakespeare Festival in 2018. And even though it wasn't stage management, I got to work really closely with a stage manager because the stage manager is in charge of the run crew backstage. So yeah, just jobs with close proximity to stage management or an assistant stage management position. Um, Andrea, did you have a question? Um, yeah, I was just looking at the two different forms that you were showing us. It looks like the preset is only for what you can do um, pre-show and during intermission, but this shift plot is all the moves in between time. Is that right? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so I, I like having the checklist for pre-show and like intermission because I like can physically check it off with a pencil. Um, and there's usually more things to do pre-show and intermission like for a props heavy show than there would be like, yeah, I mean, it's, you, you basically said it right, yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks. My, my other question was about the, um, the stage right, that blocking app, that looks awesome. Is that a subscription or is it free? Where did you find that? Um, stage right, when I first got it, um, it, it, it's not free, unfortunately. Um, when I first got it, it was a flat rate of $75 for the app. And they have shifted to a subscription system, but I still have my old app, so I'm not gonna subscribe because my old app works fine. And I, um, <laughs> I have money for that right now. <laughs> um, but right now they are operating on a subscription system. And the people who made it are stage managers and they're really cool folks so you can find it in the app store i i know they have it in the apple store um but i'm not sure about android systems okay that's great i'm gonna check into that cool awesome okay um <clears throat> does abby have a question uh yes i do okay um, so my question is mainly about, like, how can a stage manager make sure that they are uh, having, like, very effective communication with everyone involved? Because that's one of the, like, main things uh, that we do, right? Yeah. Um, so when you say effective communication, do you mean, like, with the cast or more um, with... With everyone, like, production... Uh, production people, crew, cast, just everyone. Cast is a little bit easier because they kind of like learn to listen to you, but. Yeah, um, I think this is definitely the thing that I have the hardest time with, like even after six years of stage management. Um, I, I've had to try and teach myself to not question myself so much and to um, approach things with an air of confidence because if you go into a production meeting or an interaction with um, like a director who is more experienced than you and stuff like that and you're visibly nervous about it then um, that's going to affect your relationship with them it's going to affect how they view you and your professionalism which stinks because it's really hard to not <laughs> be um, scared of that kind of thing um, but I mean I just honestly I, I try to fake it until I make it I try to think about my posture and about my tone of voice I have to be really hyper conscious of that and I'm still not there yet but it's just it's just working towards that and working towards having the confidence in yourself and your abilities I guess <laughs> Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Savannah, did you have a question earlier? Savannah? I, I already asked my question. Okay. Um, okay. But thank you. You're yeah. welcome. 
Laura. Laura. Hey, Anna. Since you are um, uh, calling a lot of these shows from up in the booth, right? Um, mm -hmm. I know as a stage manager, you kind of are the person who knows ab absolutely everything that's supposed to happen, but you're detached from everything. What is that? Relate is that a dependence on your your ASMs? How does that work? Is that because you have a really good headset system or what? Yeah, that's um, that's something that does get scary sometimes. Like, um, I mean, not scary in the sense that it's actually scary. It's just um, it's difficult going from rehearsals where you are the go-to person to the run of the show where you're in the booth and your go-to for lighting and everything but backstage you can't physically go back there and grab someone necessarily and there's some stage managers who do call shows from backstage like there's a few theaters on broadway where the stage manager is calling from the wings but even in that case you can't put down your headset and go help someone because if that happens you might not call a cue that could be dang like you could it could be dangerous like there could be something moving that you don't um keep an eye on and stuff so um i think that that is something where you have to have a really good relationship with your assistant stage managers um and having a good headset system is part of it but just like figuring out your system no matter what the the theater space sort of throws at you um some people have a texting system like if something crazy is happening and i'm still calling something sometimes i'll have to text a group chat that i have with my asms to figure out stuff um but a headset is really helpful for that yeah thanks cutting mm -hmm. out bye all right, bye. Um, is there anybody else who has a question before we wrap up? Anybody? All right. This is a lot of wonderful information, Anna. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much for having me. Um, I have really enjoyed this and Y'all, please stay safe out there. Um, keep learning stuff throughout this craziness happening. And we're all going to be back in the theater soon if we all take the precautions. <laughs> so, um, yeah, feel free to email me with anything. Thank you so much for coming.